So over the years, I've heard lots of people say that they find the Bible boring or that it's too long and it's difficult to read. It has some some difficult to, to get into storylines or plots. And if you know me at all, you know that I completely disagree. I, I understand that that is the way that it is for some people, but for me, I, I completely disagree. I, I think that there is plenty of interesting stuff going on in our Bible. So today, I'm gonna share with you guys one of those stories. And if you know me at all, you know that I love weird Bible stories, whether it's a, a teenager falling asleep and falling out of a window while Paul is preaching, or whether it's it's my famous story that I love to tell of 2 Kings 2.22 with the she-bears and Elisha and people being called bald. It's, it's just funny to me and it keeps everything interesting. And so today I'm gonna share with you guys what I think is possibly the strangest story in the Bible. And I could be wrong, I'll, I'll leave that up to you guys, but I think that this is a very strange Bible story. And so we find this one, um, you can actually find this in your Bibles in Judges 3, 12 through 30. And we're gonna read part of that in a couple minutes. Um, but before we get into that, I just give you guys a little bit of the story, what's actually going on here. And so, what, what we kind of come into is this picture where Israel has, has once again disobeyed God. And if you know anything about the Old Testament, you know that, that Israel kind of obeys God for a little while, then they don't, then they do, then they don't. And, and in turn, they're kind of blessed and stuff is going well, and then everything starts to fall apart. And this is another one of those stories where it's kind of in this cycle where Israel is not obeying God. So in, in return to their disobedience, God actually puts in place in, in charge of his people, he puts in charge this king who is a bad, mean, nasty king, a very, very mean king. He also is super fat, which I promise has something to do with this story. It's not just a, a weird side note. It actually is very important to this strange Bible story. So Ehud is this man who, who God decides after Israel cries out and they cry out to God and they say, God, why did you put this awful man in charge of us? God says, I'm going to deliver you guys. I'm going to get you out of, out of this situation that you've gotten yourself into with this evil king. And so he says, I'm going to give you this dude, Ehud. And Ehud's job is basically that he is going to take down the king this evil king and that he's gonna set things right. So Ehud is a judge and he's also left-handed, which once again matters in this strange story. And so I'm gonna pick it up and read in just one second, but I want you to keep in mind first that the king is very, very large and that Ehud is left-handed because those are both very important, strange facts when it comes to this story. So I'll pick up here and start reading. It says, Once again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. And because they did this evil, the Lord gave Eglon, king of Moab, power over Israel. So he's the bad dude. He's not a good guy, that's for sure. Getting the Ammonites and the Amalekites to join him, Eglon came and attacked Israel, and they took possession of the city of Palms. The Israelites were subject to Eglon, king of Moab, for 18 years which is a pretty long time to be dealing with a really evil king. Again, the Israelites cried out to the Lord and he gave them a deliverer, Ehud, a left-handed man, the son of Gerer and, ben and Benjamite. The Israelites sent him with tribute to Eglon, king of Moab. Now Ehud had made a double-edged sword about a foot and a half long, which he strapped to his right thigh under his clothing. He presented the tribute to Eglon, king of Moab, who was, very, who was a very fat man. Yes, it says that in your Bible. <laughs> he was a very fat man. After Ehud had presented the tribute, he sent the men on their way who had carried it. And the idols near Gilgal, he himself turned back and said, I have a secret message for you, O king. The king said, quiet, and all his attendants left him. So he basically says, I've got this secret message for you. I've got this secret thing to give you. And the king says, ah, I get what you're trying to talk about. You're going to give me another present. He's probably hoping it's like Twinkies or cake or something. And he decides at this moment that he's going to send all of his security people, his, his people who are hanging around him out of the room so he can get this super secret present. And so at that point in time, he says, quiet. He sends his attendants out of the room. And Ehud then approached him while he was sitting alone in the upper room of his summer palace and he said 
I have a message from God for you. As the king rose from his seat, Ehud reached for his left hand, drew the sword from his right thigh, and plunged it into the king's belly. Even the handle of the sword sunk in after the blade, which came out of his back. Ehud did not pull the sword out, and his fat closed over it. Then Ehud went out to the porch. He shut the doors of the upper room room behind him and locked them. After he had gone, the servants came and found the doors to the upper room locked, and they said, he must be relieving himself in the inner room of the house. So his servants come back and they think he must be using the bathroom. That's literally how strange this story is. So they decide to leave him alone. And, and the story goes on that basically this evil king dies. He's, he's died in a rather terrible way, don't get me wrong. It's not exactly a fun, happy story. But with that being said, God's people are delivered even in this very strange circumstance. So. Through this very weird turn of events, and and I'll I'll let you in on why the left-handed part was important, and that's really because if you are right-handed, such as myself, and you would would need to use your right hand to grab a sword, you would probably strap it to your left leg, because that way I could kind of grab and pull my sword. Whereas left-handed people, were far there were far less left-handed people often like it is today and so because he was left-handed he could strap his sword on his right leg and they actually didn't even pat down his his right leg to check him for a sword so they patted him down they gave him a full tsa security check before he went in to talk to the king but they didn't catch his knife because he put it on the opposite leg and so this is a very strange story like i said that's kind of the point of why i'm even bringing it up it's a very strange story but i think it's a very interesting story and through this we can see that even in weird and strange circumstances God was working to deliver his people so I think some encouragement that we can draw out of this very strange story is that God is always working to deliver his people he is always working he he has given us Jesus that who has already delivered uh, delivered us through his uh, through his death and into our salvation however he is always working for our good even in very strange, weird circumstances. So I hope that you guys can can get something out of this weird story about a very fat, evil king and a left-handed servant of God. But the, I think the moral of the story is that God works even through weird, strange, unpredictable circumstances. I hope that you have a wonderful day and that you've invo- enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it, please go ahead and and follow us on Instagram. If you're watching it on Instagram, give us a like, give us a comment and say that you enjoyed it. If you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe to our page, maybe like it as well. Um, But I appreciate you guys taking some time out of your day to hear about some strange Bible stories. We'll see you soon.